right, well, we're jumping into this new series uh, called Rhythm, and uh, I'm really excited about it uh, because I think it can be a really, uh, really big step for the life of our church. We're going to be looking at this whole year through the lens of health and hope because um, we live in a world that uh, I think sometimes struggles with being healthy, families that struggle with being healthy, systems and places and politics struggle being healthy, and I also think we live in a world that, that struggles finding hope. Um, how many of you guys know people or know places that could use some hope right now? And um, I think that Jesus is the ultimate hope of the world. He's the only hope that can change uh, the human heart, the human life. And, uh, and this year, I want to be a year of hope. I want to be a church of hope. I want to be a church that brings hope to people, that lives in hope. And um, so that's, I, I'm really looking forward to that. This series is about us being and getting healthy. And uh, I think we have a, a range of people, people who have just found Christ, to people who have um, maybe known Christ their, their whole life. We have people that are, you know, like just starting their career or they're in college. We have people who have now like their, their, the nest is empty and they get the home to themselves. It's just them and their, their spouse now and life's changed. And we got people who are even in retirement age. And uh, I just think that this series is going to have a lot um, in changing our hearts to get in rhythm with God's heart. So that's the goal, and uh, let's just jump into it. Um, I went through a season of crazy, busy insanity. Uh, I'm sure no one can relate to being really busy in our crazy world that we live in, but this was a season, it was so bad, um, it was one of the worst summers I'd ever had. I, I ended up, I was a, a youth pastor and I, I took on extra things because I wanted to help and I was uh, trying to get my master's degree uh, at the same time. So I ended up trying to get my master's degree. I was uh, in, in a two month span, I was running a sports camp for, for elementary school kids. It was like over 200 kids, so a big event. Then we ha- I was running a high school camp that we did ourselves and we were bringing kids all the way to Idaho and back and it was crazy fun. I was running that whole thing and then also um, doing a missions trip all within two months, um, and that's that's just a lot to plan and and a lot of details and and uh, on top of that, um, I was I was dating Sarah and we were trying to figure out whether like we were you know should we get married or not you know so there's like stress there. Um, I blew out my knee. I had to I'd get uh, eventually get microfracture surgery, so I was like limping around. Um, I was uh, it was so stressful. I was starting to get an eye twitch, like my eye was like twi- like tweaking out on me, and it was like annoying. And uh, in the middle of this, um, I, I got a phone call. My uh, an aunt had died, and um, and she was a she was a, a distant uh, aunt, but she was really impactful in our family. She really impacted it. So that was a big thing for our family. And that and that same day, I got another call from an uh, from a uh, family up in my old town, Bellingham, and a mentor of mine through high school and some of college had just suddenly died in his late 40s. And uh, on the same day, and then their funeral was uh, scheduled at the same day, same time, and it was <laughs> right when the funerals were happening, I was supposed to be taking a, a group of kids out, I think it was my, my youth group, to camp. And it was just, in, it was insane. Um, I didn't know how to process it. My eye was tweaking out. I had all this pressure. I had one friend said, you're going to die. This is terrible. Another thing was Michael Rabb was my roommate at the time. And, um, well, you can imagine how hard that was. You know. <laughs> No, Mike was one of the guys who like lifted me up, but uh, it was just so heavy. It was so crazy. Um, and I just felt so much stress. I felt so much guilt. I wanted to be working over here. Um, and when I was working over here, I was feeling bad. I wasn't working over here. Or my relationships uh, started to suffer a little bit. It was like I had this plate that was so full, things were just falling off of it. Have you ever felt that way? I think our world is just stressed to the max. I mean, we're, and, we're, and we're always just told to add more, more, more. We rarely take things off the plate, and it's just getting more and more. I mean, it's like that, that Thanksgiving plate or that Christmas plate for dinner. You just put mashed potatoes, and you put peas, and you put you know, gravy, and you put stuffing, you put all this stuff, and you're just, your, your eyes are a little bit bigger than your stomach, and we're, and we're putting more and more, and things just start falling off the plate. I mean, that's actually happened in my family, but... But I, I don't know about you, but that, that stress, that anxiety that can happen. It's the Lord. You need to. <laughs> Brandy, I'm, I'm going to blame you. I'm going to blame you. It's the person behind you, but I'm going to blame you. No. 
<laughs> You're getting a note from my second now. Um, man, uh, life's crazy. I mean, someone's getting a phone call now. They got to go. They're busy. Uh, some of you guys are entrepreneurs and you're, you're stretched to the max. Some of you guys uh, are in school, you're stretched to the max. Some of you guys have kids who are, think they're entrepreneurs and they're in school and you're stretched to the max. You, you know, we, we live in this culture that's insane. And with the New Year's resolutions, the New Year, you know, January, we're adding new habits. I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to have a good diet. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to spend more time with my family. We start making these goals and we just add and we add. And then when we, when we add these things, we got to actually do them, right? We've got to start adding them into our life. And, and when we start doing that, we realize, oh man, there's still like five to ten other things I should be doing. You know, and it's, it's like never enough. And we try to have these balanced, perfect lives and it just doesn't happen. And what I want to talk to you guys about today is living in rhythm with what God is doing in your life now. As we so often want to be ahead or we want to look back to the past and change things that we can't change. And when I want to talk to you guys about something that can really change your life, instead of looking at life like it's just this plate that's got to be packed with more and more and more and stuff just falling off and you can't pack more, I want you to realize that life is a lot more, it's a lot more like a river that's flowing. It's not static. It's not sitting there like a plate that you can just heat things. Like, like a river's moving and you can be standing at the banks looking at what is the same spot, but it's new water. It's new movement. And if we don't understand how time works and how our life works and that there are rhythms that are happening in the world, that that our life is a river that is flowing, then we are going to miss some of the most significant moments in our lives. We're going to carry guilt unnecessarily. We're going to have regret and be focused on regret that we don't need to be. And we we can move out of a place that's just guilt-ridden and trying to live this balanced thing into rhythm. And so what I want you guys to do is I want you to look, uh, if you have your Bibles, you can turn there with me. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it talks about rhythm. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. For everything, for everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. There is a season, there is a time, there is a moment And so often we want to take the moments or the seasons of our lives and pack everything into it. And we think, and maybe if there's an American dream thing here going, that if we pack everything in and we are all things to all people, I'm super dad, I'm, you know, super mom, I'm a great husband, great wife, I'm a great, you know, entrepreneur, I'm a great worker, I'm a, you know, I I have a great spiritual life and all these things that we have to pack in and we're going to do it all at once, like that's living life to the full. But guys, that is no way to live. That's why there's so much anxiety that's why like you like you, when I'm talking right now you're starting to feel like the panic attack come on you right like you, that that's part of the issue is that we're not thinking about this properly but the Bible teaches us for everything there is a season a, a time for every activity under heaven I bought this uh, ring for my wife when I got engaged with her and it has this diamond not as big as I wanted it to be but a diamond that, and she likes it she likes the ring it, it symbolizes kind of that moment where we decided we're, we're going to be married we're pledging our, our lives to each other and I gave her this ring and it's, this diamond is set in this white gold And there are these moments, there are these seasons that come that will never come again. Like if you've got little kids, you know, ages one to five, one to ten, there's a special stage as a parent where they want to be around you, they they can't get enough of you, they want, like they are clinging to you, they are fighting for you, and that will never come again. When they're, when they're, When they've grown, when all of a sudden they're in high school and there's other things, there's a shift, there's a change. It'll never happen again. There are moments like this. There are moments when you're starting something, when you're learning a new career, you're learning a new skill, and it's just all like crazy and new and and it's fresh. And that moment probably will never come again for that thing because it'll become old hat or become routine or life will change, a new season. And there are these gems, these diamonds that God drops into our life. And, and oftentimes we just, let it, we just let it fly by. We don't let it get set like, like, like a diamond should be. We want it to be set. And God wants us to recognize when it's time to let the diamond be set 
and recognize the season that it's in. In verse two, it talks about these seasons. It says, there's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh. Some of you guys are really good at laughter, really bad at crying. Some of you guys, stop, you're good at crying, you're really bad at laughing. And we, that's why we're, we're all here. We can help each other. Let's keep going. It goes, a uh, time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to turn away, a time to search and a time to quit searching, a time to keep and a time to throw away. Some of you hoarders in here, like, it's time to throw away. Your husband or wife are like, Yes. A time to tear down, a time to mend, or a time to heal. A time to be quiet, and a time to speak. A time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, a time for peace. In my translation, I counted the word time 29 times. Think this is important? Like, like the, the, the author of this wisdom literature from the scriptures is trying to teach us something significant. If we are willing to listen, if we are willing to apply this to our lives, it'll transform us. It can alleviate some of the guilt. It can uh, help us embrace the moments that will never come again and opportunities that will never come again. It'll help us let go of like expectations that, uh, from another season, from another person, from another time. It'll help us let go of those expectations that are not for now and live with more peace in our hearts. How many of you guys want a life like that? I want that for you guys so badly. And it's so, so important. So my big question for us today is how do we live our lives without, like, how do we live our lives all out without burning out? How do you live your life all out without burning out? And I think the, the, the first thing is knowing the difference between balance and rhythm. I was knowing the difference between trying to stuff everything on a plate realize, or realizing that this is a river that is flowing. It's the difference between the one-week farmer and the, and the one-year farmer. Do you guys know the difference between the two? The, the one-week farmer, is, is, he's like, he just wants to cram everything, get everything done. So he plants all the seeds uh, first day. The second day, he gets out there, and he you know, waters, fertilizes. Third day, he tries to harvest them and, and get what he can. And then that fourth day, he's like, all right, let's reseed. He's not very productive. In fact, it's kind of insane. It's kind of ridiculous that I would even say that. But here's the reality. Many of us are living life like that. The one-year farmer recognizes there is a season for planting. There is a season for fertilizing. There is a season for letting this grow. There is a season for harvest and bringing it in. There is a season to enjoy that harvest. You guys with me? The, the author of Ecclesiastes, the wisdom guy, he wants us to become like a good farmer, someone who recognizes the seasons. Do you know what time it is in your life? It's one of the most important questions. You know what time it is in your life. So many people miss the time of their life. They, like, they, they think the uh, time is you know, back in the good old days and they keep trying to live there or somewhere in the future and they don't know what time it is and they miss it over and over and over again. It's the human proclivity to miss the season that you are, and I are in. Um, this is in your notes. This is really important. It, this is one of the keys to, to living full out without burning out. We must know what time it is so we can rightly respond to the seasons of our lives. We must know what time it is now in, in our life so we can rightly respond to the seasons of our lives. Hopefully that was not someone's phone that broke. That would be lame. That's a bad season. First Chronicles talks about these men in the Bible. It says these men who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. When you understand the time, there's wisdom uh, so that you know what you should do now. A lot of times people will apply like, um, I'm just going to be honest, I, I have a, a, a friend who grew up his whole life where his, he did not connect with his dad. He did not connect with his dad, did not connect with him, did not go... Uh, did not give any effort to connect with him, and it really adversely um, impacted his relationship. It's been really bad. And, but here's the, here's the worst part. His friend um, has struggled 
repeating that cycle because he's so frustrated and focused on what his dad did to him that it's been hard for him not to treat his son the way his dad treated him. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? And so often we can mistake the time and be living in the past when we, we need to be living now. We need to recognize, oh, I need to pour into this person. I can't do anything about that, but I can do something about this. That's really, really important. That'll change your life for the good or the bad if you can recognize what time it is and respond to it. We have people who are in all sorts of seasons. We have people that are going through all sorts of things. I mean, you can look at uh, the seasons of life that are just biological. You can look at, uh, you know, there's an adolescent uh, period of time. There's, <clears throat> you know, the teenage years I had really bad acting. I still have scar. I remember, I look at pictures of myself and I, I know what stage I was in, like, you know, based on how red my face was. There's the 20s, you know, when you have a little bit more hair. Um, there's the 30s, a little bit less hair for some of us. Some of you guys have great heads of hair. Good for you. Um, <laughs> there's, there's like the 40s. There's these, there's these, and we know like, like typical uh, seasons that people will go through. And then there's, you know, uh, empty nesters where like their kids have, have left the home and they get it back. My grandparents, when they sent my uncle, my, uh, my dad's younger brother out, it was the last one. And uh, they, you know, wept and cried. And, and when he pulled out of the driveway, I guess my grandma said, well, let's go party and just went inside. And they, they, they were ready for the new transition. And there's people that are in retirement age. Each season is important. And each, each season, it's important to recognize how to live in that season. So um, the, other, the other thing is there are moments in our lives that come along. There are seasons that aren't just uh, based on, you know, how old we are, biological age. There are also seasons that are based um, on what is happening to us. Um, so I'm just going to, I want to read a few things. and I want you to be thinking, what season are you in? And this is just to help you identify this. In your notes today, at some point, today, whether it's during the sermon or after the sermon, I would, I would want you to write down what season you think you are in. Because the coming weeks, we're actually going to be talking about strategies on how do we live well within those seasons. But it's really important that you recognize where you're at. So I just want to read a few things and have you recognize where are you at right now in your life. Okay? Don't be thinking for other people. Be thinking for yourself. All right? Here we go. So one of the things is uh, loss. One of the things that can happen to us is just there's losses that we go through in life. You can't always predict them. Sometimes you can, but often you can't predict. You know, when the market's really going to go south, when you could lose your home, um, your mortgage. There's real losses. In 2007, 2008, there was a, a great deal of loss financially, and that caused a lot of issues for people. Um, uh, there's loss in our world. There's loss around relationships where a divorce can happen or a, a work relationship, something happens, or business relationship, someone is unethical or does something and it falls apart. Uh, there's great loss that can happen there. There's a loss of life where you can lose a loved one. Um, and when loss happens, we need to grieve. For, and here's why it's really important to recognize what season you're in. If you're in a season of loss... And limitation, like if, like let's say you lose your health, you lose a loved one, you lose your job. Um, there is a process of grieving. Now, grieving doesn't have a set amount of time. Like you know, in four days you'll feel this, and then on in six days you'll feel this, and then on the seventh you'll be fine. Um, that's not how grief works. How many of you guys know that's not how grief works? But there is a process. That often does happen. We don't. It, it, everyone's different, but there's a process. Sometimes there's a, mo a time of denial. Like I just, I don't even want to think about this. I don't want to. I don't want to dwell on this. I'm going to pretend like it didn't happen. And then there's a, a moment where all of a sudden the emotions eventually do catch up with you. It can be a, a day after the loss. It can be a year or years. And the emotions that you've been avoiding catch up to you. And all of a sudden you're angry or you're hurt. And there's pain. And we want to move through that really quick. Like in our culture, we don't want to spend any time dwelling on loss and grieving. Have you ever noticed that? Like, I don't like dwelling on that. But if we skip it, it doesn't mean that it's not there lurking under the surface. And then once you have the anger or the hurt and the pain, then all of a sudden you move to another uh, point where maybe you just don't feel anything. 
and you just you just want to move beyond it. You don't you don't feel anything. And all of a sudden, there can be healing that happens once you've gone through this whole process. Now it's different for different people, but grieving is very important. If you miss it, there it's lurking under the surface. What time? Is it in your life? There's beginnings and there's endings. There's uh, pregnancy and then there's birth and, and then you've got a baby and that changes your life. I mean, it's, it, is, it changes you. I was talking to a friend recently. He's like, you know, I, my life was totally different and I used to kind of look at my friends and be like, what is their deal? They have kids, it's like they fell off the face of the earth and it's, they're kind of annoying and they're, they've always got snot on them and you know, they're always sharing with their kid and they're always talking like this baby language, you know, and they're just like, this is, this is ridiculous until they had a kid. I said, it's changed everything, George. Like my schedule, I haven't slept in a week, you know, it's just, it changes, it changes things. So uh, we go through these seasons where there's new beginnings, like, like a, a new relationship. Maybe you started dating somebody and you, or you've got someone, your eye on someone. You're like, I want to date this person. And, and there, there could be this new life, this new thing starting. And, and then the, it can go to engagement. It can go to marriage. And, and, and those are new seasons, different seasons. What season are you in? There can be an ending of a relationship, ending of an engagement, ending of a marriage and it, that goes to divorce and separation. And, and you, it might be... A season you're in or you're walking through that season with some other people because remember the river is always moving it's always flowing and and we're moving with it what season are you in there's uh harvest seasons or you know real heavy work season where you got to bring in the harvest you can't just you can't enjoy it before you bring it in so it's like really heavy work season and you've got to put in the time you've started a business or you're about to start a business and so it takes a lot of energy and you're feeling guilty because you should you want to be doing a bunch of other things too and recognizing that no 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 no. if i'm going to do this i am going to have to focus i'm going to have to cut out some other things in my life if i want to be a parent and start a business then i might have to say no to softball this spring. And sometimes people can't say no. Now this is getting a little heavy of ourselves. This is going to be in the coming weeks, but one of the th- best things you can learn to do is, is, is learn how to say the word no. No. Because we want to say yes to everything, but we don't want to say no to anything. But when we say yes to everything, we end up saying no. We just don't say it out loud. Things just fall off the plate, right? It just falls off the plate. And you guys, I want you guys to live a life where you're not feeling guilty and having huge regret that you've let the wrong thing fall off the plate or that you're always worried about these things that are falling off the plate rather than worried about what you have on the plate. And there's seasons of busyness and intensity where you just need to get down to work. And it's like the harvest is in. If we don't bring it in, we miss it. And then afterward, it's like recovery time. Afterward, it's like re- restore your spirit, your soul time. It's, it's like relax, it's vacation, it's siesta. It's like you need to re- recharge, right? And there's people that, you know, they, they go on either end. They're like, I work hard all the time, workaholics. And there's people who are like, I'll let the workaholics work for me. You know, they don't want to do anything. Um, and and, and there needs to be a balance when it's time to recover, you need to recover. When it's time to work, you need to be able to work. And, and either way, you need to know what season you're in so that you can let go of false expectations. Okay? Really important. Here's the last one. There's seasons of celebration. There's seasons of crisis. Celebration is the good stuff. The, the weddings, the marriages, the, the, um, the graduation parties. It's the, yes, let, let's celebrate these good things. And then there's crisis that happens. Crisis is like on the other end where you're dealing with something you didn't expect or a friend or family members dealing with something. They lost their health. They lost their marriage. They lost this thing. Or you lost this thing and now you're having to deal with it. It's crisis time. And you just have to respond to crisis. And sometimes we're in the middle of crisis, someone's in denial that they're in crisis and they're trying to hold on to regular life, acting like, uh, you know, this person is still at home, but no, they've left them. And it's crisis. And, and, And I don't know what it is, but the human heart so often wants to deny that it's in this season right now. And it could even be a really good season, but we want to like look beyond it. We want to look back at some other. How many of you guys know that there's, there's, I mean, there's people that, I just, I've noticed in my life, there are people who are, they're always looking forward. They're always looking the next thing. And right now it's frustrating to them because they're not there yet. They got, they're real drivey. I mean, like, we're not there yet and we need to be there. How many of you guys are, are that way? How many of you guys are married to someone or connect to someone that way? 
Okay, good. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Then there is the person that, is all, that struggles with always looking back. Always looking back. What could have been, what should have been, what was the good old days. And, 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 and there's this regret and this reticence and like sadness. And they're always looking back. How many of you guys uh, have a tendency to always look back and, and feel guilt and regret? That's something that haunts you. There's like a haunting there. And we can go back and forth. And I'm not saying that you have to be one way or the other. There's kind of a give and take. But sometimes we, like, there's people that are this way and there's people that are this way. But I'm telling you what the, what the authors uh, of, of wisdom scripture, like in Ecclesiastes, they're trying to say, look, at, you, can't, you can't live there and you can't live here. You have to be where your feet are. And how many of us struggle being where our feet are? This is where I am. This is the season I'm in. It's a struggle. Um, there's this verse um, in Psalm 90 it it says this Psalm 90 verse 10 it says 70 years are given to us some even uh, live to 80 but even the best years are filled with pain and trouble and soon they disappear and we fly away like like our lives are short like they're just a moment and it's so easy to be in all these other places except here This series is all about being here. It's about getting our life in rhythm with what's actually going on. It's like letting go of the expectations that are crushing you. Just letting them go. And we'll talk about how to do that next week. But you got to let them go. And then how to see the actual opportunities with your kids that will never come around again, with your spouse that will never come around again, your, with your job that will never come around again, with building skill right now so that later you can reap the benefits and the fruit and the harvest later. You have to be here now. At what opportunities are right in front of you that you're missing, that I'm missing? I don't want to miss those things, guys. I don't want you to miss them. And God certainly doesn't. So how do we learn to have a heart of wisdom? I, um, this is in your notes. This is the key. Uh, this is number three. It says, make the most of the time that's been given to you. Make the most of the time that's been given to you. Um, I was teasing my grandpa the other day. I'll close with these, these few thoughts. I was with my grandpa, and he's living in this uh, retirement home. He's got his own pad. And he, he's, he's really liking it now. But it was a hard transition. He was living in California, and uh, in a season where he was, you know, fully independent, and now he's moved into a season where he's more dependent on, and needs help, assisted living. And I was teasing him. I was like, you know, the nurses were telling me that uh, that you've got you've got a you know a tattoo that no one really knows about. My grandpa was a pastor, and you know, like a real straight lace. And he goes, oh no no no. I was like, yeah, that's what they were saying. You got this, you know, hidden tattoo, grandpa. I was just teasing him, and he's like, oh no no no, George, I'm a Christian which I thought was pretty funny. He was joking, but he had this twinkle in his eye. But my grandpa, one of the things he would always come back to when he was in the season of, with my grandma and then he lost my grandma. He's been through every season you can imagine. And now he's gone from being able to be independent uh, and to losing his health to having to have a, assistance in his, in his living. Uh, he's always asking the question, is, am I making the most of the time I've been given? He's asking questions like, Lord, am I pleasing you? Still to this day, when he has to have a, a cane or a walker and he has to go to a table and eat with these same guys like every morning and some of them he didn't like at first but now he's cool with them. Um, he was always asking, Lord, am I pleasing you? Am I living a life that's pleasing you? Am I living a life that's taking advantage of the time that you've given to me? Um, he recog- he's always trying to recognize the time and make the most of it. He's loving people. He lo- like he, he knows all the names of all the nurses. He knows all the names of the people at the tables around and he's blessing and loving them. He still ministers to people, still shares about God's love. He's taking advantage of it and his world, it, it, the seasons have changed. What season are you in? Can you write it down? Can you identify it? There's just a few questions I want to ask you as we close this. Where are you giving lots of energy and effort? These are questions that will help you identify where, where you're at. Where are you putting lots of energy and effort right now? Where, what are you worried and stressed about all the time? That's telling you what season you're in. It might be telling you what's, what's something you need to let go of. Um, where, where are you just coasting? Where are you just kind of like coasting? Where, where are you full of joy? 
What's giving you joy? Where, where, where are you finding pain? Where do you wish you were? Sometimes what we wish for is in contrast to where we are at. And lastly, what season are you possibly heading into? When you think about where you're going, sometimes it's, it, 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 it's revealing of where you are. Sarah and I are in our 30s, middle 30s to be exact. We have a little three-year-old. We have a house with a mortgage. I'm done with my master's degree. I'm so glad. When I first met Sarah, I was out every night. I used to think people who were in all the time with their families were lame. I used to think it was so lame. I used to think people who weren't like busy doing things, it was just like they, they, they must not have very interesting lives. I'm in almost every night of the week now. I mean, I do my community group and I do other things, but, and I like being in. I like having like a season that's more mellow. I'm my old, like my younger self would be so disgusted with me right now. <laughs> but that stupid George didn't know about seasons. I used to drive Sarah nuts. If I was living like that now, I couldn't be a good dad. I couldn't be a good pastor. Recognize the season you're in, friends. The coming weeks, if you have friends, family members that are struggling with pressure, stress, anxiety, lack of peace, bring them. We're going to talk about the strategies of rhythm that will help us live lives that are full and in the moment. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. We're grateful for you. We give you all praise and all glory. Thank you for how good you are to us. Thank you, Lord, that we get to look forward to an eternity with you. That, that time ultimately is yours. It's in your hands. Lord, give us the ability to recognize that our lives are short. They're, they're just a moment. Give us wise hearts to plan our days, to give our days to what really matters. We pray all these things. In Jesus' name, amen.